there are over uh, 5 million people in the United States and Canada who um, have paralysis related to either a brain or a spinal cord injury. And the, the main issues uh, relate to the primary type of damage that might be from brain trauma or a spinal cord injury or a stroke. And we refer to that as the primary uh, damage. And short of prevention, there's not much that one can do to uh, limit that. So a lot of the focus of uh, my lab and other labs that are involved in central nervous system repair and regeneration is directed at ways to try to limit the effects of the injury or to alter the microenvironment and to replace lost cells. And so the different treatment strategies that our lab is looking at is A, how do you protect a nerve cells against the secondary damage? How do you uh, understand and control the deleterious effects of inflammation that occur after uh, the injury? And then once the injury has occurred, how do you alter the microenvironment? And there are two key elements to the changes in the microenvironment um, after, say, a brain or a spinal cord injury. We're in a remarkable era right now, an era of regenerative neuroscience. And so the reality is that clinical trials with regenerative therapeutics have uh, commenced. How feasible is it to actually achieve a cure for people with a brain and spinal cord injury? Well, that's perhaps uh, too lofty a goal to set. The reality is, is that even relatively small improvements in function can have a big impact and say if you consider somebody who's paralyzed from the neck down with a spinal cord injury. And so a lot of the treatment strategies are now looking at trying to have targeted um, application to, to various uh, losses of function. Some of this work remarkably is already being transitioned to early phase clinical trials and a lot of, of the work that's going on right now is in a bi-directional translational nature to try to uh, foster treatment strategies for the future.